Uh, but yeah, we're, it's amazing that we can now uh, read the DNA and rewrite it. Mm. Uh, and it's and in my work, we've just recently figured out how to turn on three embryonic genes in the body. Okay. Uh, and when we do that, it, just the right three genes, that resets the age of, of the tissue and it gets rejuvenated. How are you measuring that? How is one measuring age now? Well, a couple of ways. Okay. Uh, I've been working with a company, and in disclosure, I, I, was, um, I am an advisor to them, okay. uh, Inside Tracker. They came out of MIT, saw them about 12 years ago, uh, joined their board. I'm not on there anymore, but have nurtured this company because I really believe in it. What they do is it's a blood test. You can have it done at your local lab core request or even have someone come to your kitchen, which is what I do. Mm-hmm. And I do it you know, every three to six months, and it's a, a dashboard on my body. And then those 40 measurements of things that I mentioned, like HbA1c, there's yep. other things like CRP for inflammation, okay. of course, blood glucose levels, there's testosterone, vitamin levels. It's a compendium. That's put into an algorithm that's based on how these things change over time with age for your sex and, um, I guess, your, your, uh, your race and other things. Mm-hmm. And then it's back calculated to say, all right, compared to other humans on the planet, are you older or younger than them? Mm. The average male. Mm-hmm. So I can plot. I have plotted myself for all of these parameters individually and as a compendium, as a, as an algorithm, for one score called the Inner Age 2.0 score. Mm-hmm. Where do I sit compared to other 52 year olds mm-hmm. that are white Caucasian? You're so young, yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm in the the top. You know, I'm not. There, I'm I'm better in terms of that number of uh, than 98 percent of people my age. Mm. And that two percent bothers me. I'm very competitive. <laughs> I did go off a statin just to check because I was I was losing my memory. But, uh, yeah. I am on a statin now, okay. but I went off it and my cholesterol spiked, so don't have any problems. And you can't, if you can get it down with diet, do that yeah. because there are effects on the brain. Not at all. Um, I, I have plotted my, my blood biochemistry over the years against the average human and, and optimized each one. Mm. And it takes, it's an experiment. It's long term. You can't just do it overnight. Mm. But I think that's what modern medicine should be, is mm. that we're constantly monitoring ourselves, not going to the doctor once a year for a checkup where they say, how do you feel? Are you sleeping? You feel like, okay, okay go home. Mm. That's not medicine. Yeah. So that's therapy. Yep. Now, medicine is, and the future of medicine, and for some people who you know, want to invest in this on, and put in their time and money, you can get devices to read your body continuously. Mm-hmm. We've talked about continuous glucose monitors in our arm, but there are rings. Right? I've got this aura I've got the ring. ring. And there's a bio button. Um, I brought one today in case this came up. I'm, I'm holding up a little um, gray squarish device that is maybe... Mm-hmm. What a quarter of an inch thick that I stick on my chest usually, mm-hmm. and it measures my heart, my vibrations, my movement. Yep. And this thing can tell you if, I'm, if you're going to have a heart attack next week. Yep. Kind of important. Yes. But other things, it can even tell you if, you're, uh, if you have a cold or, mm-hmm. or a flu or whether you need antibiotics or not. Mm-hmm. And this is the future. I, I raise this actually as an example of, of the way medicine should be, which mm-hmm. is you are monitored not once a year, but a thousand times a second. going to be ubiquitous. Then the old way of doing medicine is going to seem medieval. I'm wondering if you've done any reading about red light therapy, any research on it. Right. Well, it's right. my job to stay up on, on these things yeah. and even to try them myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it brought a smile to my face when I was reading the science on the red light therapy okay. and the hyperbaric oxygen and the oxygen um, hype. So they all point to mitochondria again, mm-hmm. even the red light. Uh, there are scientific papers that I could pull out that show that re- the red light at that, at that wavelength is disrupting the ability of mitochondria to make energy. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the way mitochondria make energy is that it's like a hot potato. They take uh, electrons and they pass them along. Red light disrupts that. And then you have low energy and your AMPK system detects low energy and starts to give you the health benefits because it's worried that you're going to run out of mm. energy. Mm. So th- light, oxygen, hunger, simulating low energy, or in some cases actually is low energy. It's been shown to protect against hair loss and improve skin. I tried shining some red light on some nematode worms to make them live longer. It didn't work, okay. but that was a few years ago. Um, I think there's a lot more data now that it's, it's likely to be working similar to exercise and fasting, but through a light mechanism, which is actually easier sure than is. these other things, uh, and stimulating stem cells. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can buy a cap. You can get a cap that you yep. put on your hair. I mean, you've probably seen, on, not you, but... So metformin helps with glucose in the body somehow the metabolism of glucose correct so yeah i feel even stronger there's a lot of data from looking at tens of thousands of people that went on metformin and 
And people who go on metformin who have type 2 diabetes, who normally would live a short lifespan because they have more cardiovascular disease, they're aging faster, they're actually protected from these diseases relatively. Mm. And those type 2 diabetics on on metformin live longer than people that don't have type 2 diabetes. Mm. That's a remarkable observation. Mm. And because once you start to study tens of thousands of people, it starts to look real. Mm -hmm. Um, And especially for those people that are predisposed like you are to cardiovascular disease Mm -hmm. uh, and other issues like cancer, there it's very clear that metformin on average protects you against those diseases because it's not just working on keeping your glucose levels down. Remember, it's turning on the mitohormesis and protecting the body through these defense mechanisms. Now, people might, might be thinking, well, okay, You've got these protective mechanisms, but what are they actually doing to make you healthier? Mm. Well, I've mentioned only one of the things they do, which is turning over those old proteins Mm -hmm. that are either oxidized or have glucose stuck to them. But they do other things. They do protect telomeres when you turn them on. Mm -hmm. Uh, But they they do another thing that's really interesting, uh, and that is that they can uh, rejuvenate stem cells. Mm. And so you get stem cells protected, and then they can divide, and then they can repopulate the body. Mm. Another thing that they do really well, particularly the sirtuins, is that they help repair broken DNA. Anyone who's been in the sun, I was Australian, I've been damaged badly by the sun. That ages you. It actually is, we know that damage to DNA accelerates aging. Mm. In my lab, we can cause a mouse to be 50% older by doing this process. Mm. The sirtuins will slow that down. We had a paper in Science in 2000 and, it was 2018 that showed that by raising NAD levels, by giving mice NMN, the same molecule that I take, their DNA repair systems were much more efficient. And if you damage them with radiation, which we were trying to simulate space radiation, but it's also similar to cosmic rays that you get if you fly a lot, yeah. which I know you do, yeah. uh, NMN was protecting those mice from the damage. And you can see the damage. You look in their livers, that was damage, damage, damage in a normal mouse, and give, uh, give them NMN, and it wasn't there for the most part. Hmm. So that's another way it can protect against aging. If you cannot convince your doctor to get metformin, yeah. there is an alternative. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a plant molecule called berberine mm-hmm. uh, from the berber plant. And if you, in clinical trials, if you take it at two grams a day, mm-hmm. uh, it does lower blood glucose similar to metformin. Mm-hmm. And that you can buy on you know, any pharmacy yeah. or online. Where, right now, where are we? And if you were to forecast, say, within the next five years, where do you believe we are unable to actually alter DNA that way? Well, right now it's... It's possible to add genes to humans. So we, we've cured, not we, but mm. scientists and doctors have cured genetic it's diseases so that way. incredible. Blind people are seeing again. Yes. Probably, in, certainly in this decade, uh, we'll see people being able to add genes to their bodies more commonly. Uh, and so where we're at is there are, there are some genes or some studies that have shown that it works in humans. You can correct sickle cell. Yeah. anemia and fix that mm-hmm. that one's a little easier because it's in the bloodstream trying to fix alzheimer's with crispr is going to be a lot more challenging the blood is easy to access i would say in the next five years it'll be fairly common to to fix genetic diseases with crispr and then and then things get really interesting when we start to fix things that aren't genetic maybe we want to all fix our predisposition to diabetes we could potentially go in and fix that before we actually get that disease and and make up for not having great genetic lineages. Would you...